Every hero needs a villain. In their search for the mask of creation, the Toa must face enemies raised from the dead. This is Bionicle Week, the resurrection of evil. Day 1, Skull Warrior. Hello, this is Sanad here, and welcome to Bionicle Week, the resurrection of evil. We are back again with the new Bionicle 2015 line, this time with the summer 2015 wave featuring the Skull Villains, as many fans have dubbed them, including myself. Um, it's a good general term. There are five sets in this wave, as opposed to the 13 we had in the winter wave, so there's a lot less to review. But I do want to make this a seven-day week, as there are two combination models that can be made with the Skull Villains, and we'll take a look at those on day six and day seven. But first of all, let's take a look at set number 70791, Skull Warrior. Now, Skull Warrior here is 102 pieces and is a basic foot soldier kind of, kind of trooper for the Skull Grinder. And basically how they work is that there's multiple legions of them and they have two different weapons and there are several of them. On the back, you can see we have the comic featuring the Skull Warrior taking a shot at Kopaka there. So overall, it's pretty much the box. A very nice box design. I like the haunted themes look to the sets. And it is really cool because you can see like armies of uh, Skull Warriors up in the city here. So really cool box design. It is the $15 price point. So it's the same size as the smaller Toa like uh, Liwa, Gali, and Pohatu, as well as Laura Skull Spiders. So without further ado, let's take a look at Skull Warrior. So here is Skull Warrior in his built form. Now this is the standard uh, figure without any weapons, but as you can see, he is very bone thin. Uh, the Skull Villains have these bone pieces, which I'm not sure if they came from Hero Factory or not. They use them a lot, and he's got a very skeletal design. Things I really like, though, are the rib cage piece. This is, I believe, a new part. Don't quote me on that. But you can see that they do have this like rib cage effect. It is just a standard CCBS armor piece, but it looks really great. Also, the bone pieces just do a good job. I also like his asymmetricalness. Because this guy does come with a bow, he is an archer, so one shoulder pad here. But he also has one knee pad, and you'll notice that the build of the legs is swapped. So instead of this being here, they actually swapped it. So it's blue silver. Uh, silver blue, which is pretty neat, and this is just silver silver, this is blue silver with this really awkward orange piece. I don't really like that. It only matches his claws, which is claws could you, you know, be very similar, you, you could explain them away as as something different, like they're poisonous or energized. But then you have this, um, it only really matches up with the eyes. It's a very awkward thing just to have this one red thing in the middle of the blue and silver. But speaking of the claws, they are articulated. And they are the skull spider legs, um, from what I can tell. Or or maybe not. I think they're actually a different piece. They look really good overall. What also looks really good is his mask. As you can see, his mask is very nice. It is a nice gunmetal color. Um, it does match the shoulder pad and the knee pad, and it looks super good. It also is quite small for a bionicle mask. As you can see, this compared to, say... Kopaka's golden mask, you can see it's a lot smaller, which goes with the whole skeletal theme, as these are kind of their skulls, but they are part of them, they are masks, as in order to defeat them, you must remove their mask. But it looks really nice. Now, this same mask is used for Skull Grinder, so it's kind of interesting how they did share masks in this wave. But it looks really good, it's probably my favorite new mask of the wave. But other than that, let's take a look at the articulation for Skull Warrior. Articulation-wise, starting at the head, he's got a ball-jointed neck, but be careful of the mask, as usual. He's got the ball-jointed shoulders, he's got elbows, he's got a uh, wrist ball joint on both sides. It's not really restricted on this side over here, so that's pretty nice. Hips that move forward, but sometimes get a little sticky there. Uh, knee, foot, and the toes. So you can actually get him in a wide range of poses. So the first weapon for the Skull Warrior is his bow. Now this is a standard bow, very similar to Vizuna, the Protector of Jungles, and it works in the same way. As you can see, two handles here, and this does allow it to move with the articulation, which is pretty nice. 
And with his added joints, he can really get into a nice uh, firing archer pose. Plus, the toes do help balance him out with sort of an ankle tilt kind of function. But it does feature the protector blaster, so it is just the turn the knob, and it fires off the six bullets, which works pretty well. Plus, it's got these nice bone pieces, and it looks really, really good overall. And I gotta say, it's my favorite of the two weapons. But the other one has a little bit more functionality. As you can see, Skull Warrior has a mask stealing staff. There are a nice hook here, which is perfect for taking the mask off of a Toa. And as you can see, it looks a little awkward. There is no other piece here. It is just a straight staff. And it doesn't look too great. But this is the way the function works, is that you turn the gear, and his arm does swing. Um, so it does swing for the uh, face stealing, or this, the mask stealing staff. It also has a peg back here, so you can just, you know, strap it on there when you have the bow in place. But like I said, it's a mask stealing staff. So as you can see, all you need to do is swing his arm down onto Kopaka's mask, and he can actually just rip it from his face, which is pretty cool. Now that the Skull Warrior has stolen Kopaka's golden mask, he can take its power for his own. Because as you can see, a great mask of power can't just be worn by anyone without it getting a bit corrupted. Now this is actually an infected mask or corrupted mask of Kopaka. What's really neat is that each of the main Skull villains include these bonus masks. And as you can see, it is the Kopaka Mask of Ice. It is the gold version, but it is half blue which is the power being drained from it. So this is really interesting. This is actually something that does pop up in the story is that masks get stolen and their power does get drained. As you can see, it is partially transparent. It would be really cool to see a full transparent one, kind of like the full transparent mask of fire that we've gotten this year. But it is really cool and it looks pretty neat on Skull Warrior. So that's pretty much all there is to this set. Overall, I gotta say that Skull Warrior is pretty cool. I really do dig this guy. He's probably my favorite of the four basic Skull villains, and that's because I like archers, and I like his dual weapon functionality, and his asymmetrical design really works quite well. Plus, I think his color scheme is probably the best. Also, because this is a troop builder, I totally buy a second one, like I did. I totally gave this one a modified staff, as you can see. I kind of extended it so that he can actually hold it in the middle of the staff. And I rigged it up so his bow could be stored on his back. But yes, not everyone needs to buy two, but it is a neat thing to have the troop builder, technically it's a troop builder, have it be such a solid figure. Um, it's definitely really nice overall. And I gotta say, I definitely recommend Skull Warrior. For 15 bucks, you can't really go wrong with this set. It has a lot of functionality, and the colors look really good. Plus, if you really wanted to, you could probably swap out that orange shoulder pad if you have another piece that you'd like to use. Overall, that is all for day one on Bionicle Week, The Resurrection of Evil. And stay tuned for tomorrow, where we'll be taking a look at another Skull Villain. Be sure to check out Hirotaka.com for all of your Bionicle news and more. So until then, be sure to subscribe to Sound Out 12 for three videos a week. Model Kit Monday on Mondays, Sound Out's Toy Chest, the Mystery Review Series on Thursdays, and the Sound Out Review on Saturdays. Also be sure to check out Hirotaka.com for your Bionicle news and more. Until next time, this is Sound Out saying goodbye.